Hello and welcome. My name is George. My channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. So if you're new to Logic Pro, today I'm going to show you all the basics you need to know to create your first track quickly and easily. So let's dive in. Now when you first start up Logic, this is what you're going to see. So you're going to have the option of starting a new empty project or there's also some project templates here that you can look at. And basically the templates will load up a session with tracks already added. So let's go ahead and just create a new track so we can start from scratch. So I'm gonna select empty project and I'm gonna to go to choose. Now the first thing that it asks us to do is to create a new track. But before we do that, I'm gonna take a look at our options first. So I'm gonna go over to the Logic Pro menu and go to Preferences, and go to General. I'm going to move over to the Audio tab, and the important settings you're going to want to look at are your output device and input device. So that's what you're going to be using to hear audio from Logic, as well as record any audio into Logic. So generally, this would be your audio interface. If you don't have an audio interface, then your output device will either be your built-in speakers or any headphones that you have plugged in. And in that case, your input device could be set to the built-in microphone as well. And one other setting you might wanna take a look at is this IO buffer size. So without getting too deep into it, this number is gonna control two things, both how much latency you get in your headphones or speakers. So latency is that little bit of delay that you get from the time you speak into your microphone to the time that sound gets to your headphones. So the smaller the number here, the least amount of latency we're gonna get, but also the harder your computer needs to work. So in most instances, 256 is a good place to start. If you feel your computer is struggling a little bit, then you can increase this number. And if you feel the latency is a bit too noticeable for you, then you can look at decreasing this number as well. The next setting we wanna take a look at is under the advanced tab over here. When you first install Logic Pro, this setting will be unchecked. So you wanna make sure that this is checked on and that everything is enabled, and that way you'll get the full features found in Logic Pro. So now that we've taken care of our settings, we can start creating some music. So I'll just go ahead and close this. So the first thing we need to do is create a track. So we have a few different options here. So I'll, I'll just go through with them with you. So software instrument, so this is a MIDI instrument. So these are instruments in Logic that you can perform using either a MIDI keyboard or even on your typing keyboard. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. Now, external MIDI, for most people, they'll never be using external MIDI. This would be if you had an external keyboard or synthesizer and you wanted to utilize the sounds from that keyboard. And then next we have audio. So this would be if you wanted to record any audio into Logic. So for example, with a microphone or perhaps with an electric guitar, or if you're importing audio files like samples, those would fall under an audio track as well. And just below it, we have this guitar or bass. And now this is actually the same as an audio track, but the only difference is that there'll be a virtual guitar amp or bass amp already loaded on that track. So it's just a bit of a shortcut to get guitar or bass sounds when you're recording. And the last type of track is a drummer track, which is what we're gonna start with today. So I'll just hit create and I'll show you what the drummer is all about. So right now you'll see there's a drummer track loaded in. This is the Bluebird kit and the drummer's name is Darcy. And you'll see we have eight bars worth of drums. So if I press the space bar for play, you'll hear what that sounds like. So there's a little sample of that. Now if I open up what's called the library, which is done using this icon right over here, or Y on your keyboard, now you'll see all the different drummers available to us. So you can see here Darcy has a description, tasteful, restrained, and dedicated to serving the song. Darcy plays simple, tasteful pop beats on a natural sounding kit. So under the songwriter genre, you'll see all the different drummers we have available. If I go to Levi, you'll see he's the funky drummer. Graham, experimental, so on and so on. And so all of these are gonna sound a little bit different. And then we have different genres to choose from as well. So we've got rock, 
alternative R&B, electronic, hip-hop, and percussion. So from this, you can just choose the genre that best fits what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and give Jesse a try here. Okay, that works for me. Now, next, you might want to adjust the tempo. So in Logic, the tempo is found at the top here. And you'll see we're at 95 beats per minute. So I can simply click and drag that to wherever I'd like. If I'd like to slow it down a little bit at 90, or I'll make it a little bit more drastic, 80, for example, and press spacebar again to play. The drummer will follow that. I'm going to put it back up to 90, let's say. Now, real quick, I'll just mention down here, you've got different beat presets for each drummer. And you can also either turn on or turn off certain drums sim simply by clicking. And if they're lit up, that means they're on. And then each drum also has different patterns. So for the hi-hat, you have four different patterns. And kick and snare, we have up to eight. So you can experiment with that to tweak your drum pattern even further. Now, why don't we go and add a bass line to this? And for this, I'm going to introduce you to Apple Loops. So to access Apple Loops, you go over here in the top right to this little loop-de-loop -loop icon. Click on that. And here we get a list of loops available to us in Logic for free. And you'll notice some of these are grayed out which simply means that those need to be downloaded from Logic. And there's a little arrow here to do that. And right off the bat, you might notice that there's lots and lots of loops. So to better organize this, you can go up here to the instrument icon and click on that. And here we can sort all our loops by instrument. So if we want bass, let's go and click on bass. And then we can even further sort through these by going to genre. And let's say we want funk, we can go there. And then we can listen to some of these loops. Okay, so let's say I like this. Now, one thing I should mention about the loops is you'll see here, uh, first, the name, and then it'll tell you the length, so the amount of beats, and then the original tempo that it was recorded at, so 125, which is actually quicker than what we have our tempo set at, but it seems to work at this tempo, so I'm not too worried about that. And lastly is the key, so this is the original key that it was recorded at, so D sharp. Now, if I go up here and click on this little arrow, this gives us a few different display modes. Now, currently I'm on custom, and if I go to Beats and Project, that's likely what you'll see when you first open up Logic. And you'll notice here it says C major, so that's to set the key of my track. So right now, since it's set to C major, this loop is gonna be playing in C major. Now, if I set it to D sharp, which is E flat, you'll hear that that gets transposed up. So whatever you have set here, these loops will match that key. So now, if I want to use this loop, all I got to do is click and drag it below my drums. And now if I press spacebar, I can hear the two together. But as you noticed, it's only two bars long, whereas currently my drum loop is eight bars long. So what I'm gonna do is you can extend this loop. And to do that, if you just hover over in the top right corner there, you'll see this little loop icon. And when you see that, then you can click and drag and it'll create a loop for as long as you drag. So now I've just extended the loop for eight bars. So now I'm gonna close my loop browser. And now let's add a software instrument to this track. 
So I'm going to go to the plus button right here to create a new track. And I'm going to go software instrument, and then I'm going to hit create. So right now I have an empty software instrument track. So if I play on my keyboard, you'll see some notes are being read up there, but you're not hearing any sound from the instrument. That's because this instrument, as I said, is currently empty. So what we need to do is load an instrument in here. So if we go again to our library, and if you don't see this, you'll want to click this icon up here and make sure that our empty track is highlighted, which it currently is. Then you can select any of these instruments down here. So if we want to add a keyboard, for instance, let's go to electric piano. And why don't we try Wurlitzer Modern. So now I've got this electric piano loaded in that you can hear. So I'm playing this in using my MIDI keyboard. Now, if you don't have a MIDI keyboard, what you can do is actually use your typing keyboard. So to do that, you're going to go up to the window menu and go to show musical typing. Now with this, you can simply hit the corresponding letters on your typing keyboard to trigger notes on the software instrument. So I'm going to close this for now. And now to record in to Logic, we can either simply just press the big record button up here, or we can press the letter R. Now before we do that, we're going to hear a four beat count in which will let us know when to start recording. And you can change this count in as well by going up to the record menu and then to count in, and then you can set it to however many bars you'd like. I'm gonna stick with one bar for now. Okay, so let's go ahead and record something in here. So I'm just gonna hit the letter R and after four beats, I'll start recording. Okay, so now you see we recorded in our MIDI information and you'll see a whole bunch of scrambly notes down here. Now this is called the piano roll. Now if you don't see this, and it simply looks like that, you can easily get to it either simply by double clicking on here, or you can go up to the little scissor icon here and click that. And that'll open up the piano roll that you see here. So this shows us all our notes mapped out on our keyboard. So you can see our keyboard here and these little notes that correspond to it. So this is where we can fix any mistakes we made. We can add or remove notes and we can fix any timing issues. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And to zoom in right now, I'm holding down option and simply scrolling with the wheel on my mouse. You can also go here and use these little sliders to zoom in and out as well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is apply what's called quantizing. And what quantizing does is it snaps your notes to the grid. So that just helps fix any timing issues that you might've had. So to demonstrate that, I'll just zoom in right here on these notes. So this is the beginning of the beat right here. You can see the little grid markings. These each correspond to a 16th note. And right here, obviously I'm a little bit late and this is a little bit late as well and they're not all together. Now a little bit of variation is sometimes a good thing, but depending on the style of music you're doing, sometimes you want it directly on the beat. So I'm just going to demonstrate how to do that. So I'm going to select all my notes here. And to do that, I can simply go Command A, and you'll see those all get highlighted. And now if I click on this little Q button, it's going to quantize everything to the closest 16th note. And when I do that, you're going to see everything snap 
to this line right here. So everything snap to the closest sixteenth. Now I can change this value to let's say quarter notes, for example, and you'll notice that these notes now jumped over to here because it's making all the notes go to the closest quarter note. In this case, I want to stick with 16th notes because I don't want those notes to overlap. And now I'll zoom out a little bit and everything should be in time. I'll just do a quick scan because I feel like I made a little mistake at the end here. So that note shouldn't be there. So I'm just going to click on it, hit the delete key on my keyboard, and that's gone. And now this note shouldn't be there as well. So same thing, going to select that, delete that. And this note actually should be shortened. So I'm going to just click on that and drag that there. And that'll fix everything. So now I'll just have a quick listen back. So there you go. So it's just that easy to start making music in Logic Pro. So we created a drum loop using the drummer. We found a bass loop using the included Apple loops. And then we recorded our own keyboard track in using the software instrument and loaded in one of the electric pianos. We then did a few edits in the piano roll to help clean up any mistakes and we've got the foundation of a track that we continue to build on. Now, if you want to continue to improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.